Thank you very much. Among many um, big ideas for busy people, I'd like to offer a little idea for relaxed people. <laughs> the experiment you're about to see uh, went viral on the internet, presented by Mould, about a year ago. And then two Cambridge physicists, Biggins and Warner, both friends of mine, wrote a paper. And of all places, the New York Times picked it up as news about a month ago. So it, was, it went around the internet all over again. Here is a cup containing a chain and when I let go of this chain, and its own way, will, the chain will start coming out. But that's not the only thing that the chain will do. As it comes out of the cup, you'll see that the chain spontaneously and mysteriously starts standing up like a fountain, whereas there is no apparent for upward force anywhere. Here we go. What the? <laughs> Now, one defect of this experiment is that after each demo, I have to carefully ladle in the chain because if you dump a chain onto a random pile, there's a probability law that says that the chain will get entangled with a high chance. Um, so I have to improve this aspect of the, uh, of the demo. But in the meantime, you can do this at home. You know, I went to um, the local hardware store, Dixon's, and bought this chain for 30 cents per foot, I think, and I bought, that was 10 feet, so I had to pay $3. You see, experimental science is expensive. <laughs> but at the same time, it turns out that there's a relationship between um, the height of the fountain, chain fountain, and the depth to which the chain falls. So what you should do is to buy not 10 feet, but maybe 30 feet, and do it from a second floor balcony, for example, up there, and then you'll see a big, magnificent chain fountain. What on earth went on? Um, I'd like to suggest one mechanism that might begin to uh, allow us to see what's going on. Imagine that you have this stick falling, and let's stop the fall. Namely, there's a table, so table is going to stop the fall. But you see, when the, this end bangs on the table, it bounces and makes the stick spin around what is called the center percussion, so that the other end gets pulled down suddenly. You see, so as soon as we stop the fall, paradoxically, the other end starts falling faster than free fall. So it is quite curious that by stopping one part of the body, another part of the body starts getting accelerated. And what's happening on the chain, roughly speaking, is the opposite of this. You run the film backwards. Let's say that you have a stick like this, and I suddenly pick up this end of the stick. And you see, it goes around and bangs on the table. Table in reaction gives it an upward kick, and as you go bang, 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 kicks start building up and give you an upward momentum that makes the chain fountain. Now, this kind of phenomenon is quite interesting, and it's a part of a large class of phenomena, in my opinion. You see, when you try to push against something, that something usually pushes back at you. And when you pull at something, that something pulls back at you. Well, that is action, reaction, equal, and opposite directions. That's Newton's third law. But this kind of phenomenon shows that there are circumstances in nature and the engineering where when you press on something, that something mysteriously pulls you in, and when you pull at something, that something pushes you out as if to help you. This is clearly interesting in engineering applications, but also I suspect that biology, which has to spare its resources, uses, takes advantage of this. But anyway, this kind of anomalous reaction, when you press, it pulls in, and when you pull, it pushes out, I think it's worth looking around and start collecting lots of other examples and understanding the overall sort of theory behind this. Anyway, that is why this anomalous reaction is why you get this phenomenon that when you let the chain go, it stands up into a fountain. <laughs> Have a wonderful festival. Well, you, you too have bought yourself a little extra time for questions because you went so, so amazingly speedily and actually managed to do two experiments as well. So uh, that's some kind of record for big ideas. Can you give us some examples of things where when you pull it, push, it, it helps and when you push it, 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 it pulls with you? Um, they are unfortunately a bit too complicated and understudy to give. I'm sorry, but this is a really beautiful example, isn't it? So I <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> he said no. Okay. We need questioners at either end, please. You, you go around doing demonstrations like this yes. in order, I think, yes. to get people thinking about physical phenomena and how you can analyze them mathematically. Is that right? Um, it is almost right, but fundamentally wrong. So I'd like to explain. Um, <laughs> people often think that I go around saying, oh, I am the guardian of the great principles of science, and I'd like to dumb them down to you, you holy poloi so that you simple people can understand what's going on in terms of toys. That's exactly what I'm not doing. What I'm doing is that I'd like to explore in daily phenomena, accessible things of daily life, surprises. Surprises that are really interesting and amusing, hopefully, for non-scientists, but also for scientists. So when we first discover something like this, it's surprising for all of us, including for professional scientists. And you should actually have them scratching their heads for quite a while. Of course, because of the technical baggage and the you know, habit of um, studying theories and so on, they might start understanding things faster than the rest of us. But nonetheless, it should be surprising for all of us. So in, instead of illustrating big science in terms of those small experiments, I'd like to have those little phenomena and from them extract altogether some interesting science. That's the way the direction it goes. Thank you. Over here. Um, how do you find these surprising By, well, how do you find interesting and love, you know, lovely friends? Very difficult. It's an art of life. <laughs> Many of us end up finding such things, uh, such, such people, several times per lifetime. And if you keep your eyes open, have a an warm heart, and and if you are awake. And if you're curious and if you are somewhat persistent, you have to be persistent with friends too, then you end up finding these phenomena several times in your life as well. It's a mystery. I thought there was another person there, but there isn't. So when was that discovered? Did you discover this? No, or? I didn't discover this. This was discovered, I, well, I, something like this had been sort of noticed, but this actual phenomenon was discovered by, I think, Mould uh, about a year ago. As I said, it went viral on the internet and then uh, studied by Biggins and Warner of Cambridge University, and there are several others. Pe but this is who, within the last few years? It's in, in last year, so within, last year. within 12 months. So one thing that I conclude from this is that there are, although there are billions of people yes. with things as simple as beads and cups, yes. there are still new phenomena to be discovered about their everyday elementary behavior if you look carefully. Oh, yes, because humans are very few in number. I mean, we think that we own the universe, but we don't. I mean, the universe is much bigger, bigger than we are. So per human, there's an enormous amount of universe, and you can discover lots and lots of things around you. <laughs> OK, please. Yeah, I have a question uh, in terms of the design of the material. For example, the fountain you just showed us, what type of materials it can be, you know, it can be a potential for us to yes. imagine. Yeah. So I don't know what material can be designed in terms of this, and because I don't know, it's going to be new material. I mean, if we knew, it's not going to be research, right? I mean, <laughs> but what I'm suggesting is that the Somehow, the basic mechanism that seems to be making this fountain, chain fountain possible is this anomalous reaction, that when you push, it pulls, and when you pull, it... You see, as I pick up the chain, this pile of chain mysteriously is giving me an upward reaction, strange, but upward, this anomalous reaction, so as to make it stand up. So this is quite interesting to look into, and I'm but saying that... I'm, I'm beginning to wonder what your grant applications look like. They must be interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, they usually don't please. like it. Yes, I, I, um, I really love the demonstration. I, I teach seventh grade uh, math and science myself, and uh, we actually spent some time in our classroom uh, exploring this and siphoning and a few other yeah. of those simple sorts of things. Um, and I wanted to know, just I, the other woman asked, where do you find these? I, I've find plenty of things, but I'm just curious what some of your other favorite sort of magic tricks. My students love catching coins from their elbows, for instance. Yeah, that's a hard question because we don't have time. Um, I should have brought maybe a hundred of those things. I have a collection of about 200. But um, 
I don't know um, how to show them to you, but they're all around you, please believe me, and so you should, um, you should have discovered. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Go and find a few for yourself, I think, is the, is the thing. Thank you very much.